Hello, hello. This is Johanna Suotari from Hall to Run. Today we will take a look at a situation and code a object version manager. Uh, I thought I would never, ever, ever again uh, end up in this situation that I could kind of uh, pre-think, pre-figure out the uh, all use cases for my <coughs> application and data objects. But just as it seems to be, the, uh, the personal applications, they tend to grow way bigger than I originally figured and uh, more features that I kind of like uh, add into them. Finally, it grows bigger than I initially ever could have figured in kind of a the, 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 the feature richness of the application and the complexity of the uh, data objects, for instance. So, finally at the end of the day, I landed into a situation that I cannot release any more updates into the application without destroying the uh, existing user content. <clears throat> so, in this kind of a situation, we have no other choice than to code our custom object version manager which kind of a, can migrate the user data in into in a way that it, the user data isn't lost and at the same time we can inject some new cool features okay let's take a look at what we're about to do and then let's code that version manager so this is pretty much the uh, the context and target what we want to avoid and what we want to do so our current main data object let's call it version 1 we could just pump it up into version 2 but we will lose in in this application we will lose existing user data because it's going to be replaced with a freely <clears throat> freely usable parameters in the next version and uh, they don't exist yet at this point but I do know that there was a default content being used in, in without a freely configurable option so we can what we can do we can now migrate create version data a class of a version manager which can kind of a have update functions for what we had to do coming from version 1 to 2 and in the next step what we will do if we pump up ever pump up from version 2 to 3 etc 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 and while we are kind of a if we use this function correctly <coughs> this class right when the uh, application gets created for instance in the onCreate lifecycle function we can synchronize each and every data object fetched from the database and immediately display those new fresh migrated data objects into a view model and at the same time we're gonna inject those object objects back into the database so they are ready for the uh, next use of the application and at the same time they don't get updated anymore because pretty much they are already my created version 2 data objects and of course this is a big change of the philosophy how the app uh, features will be used so we might want to prompt the user about the new features and he might need to uh, give some attention to the application to make it work if there are any errors or pre-assumptions on my end so let's jump and code the version manager let's code the uh, the version manager which we want to use on in our lifecycle on create function so yes like so okay now we can add also const variables on top in here they should kind of a create as also this 
global, globally accessible constants. So in here, I'm just going to first create a couple of variables. So this is the version that is going to be what is going to be right now. So we need to keep on updating this each time. Then we are pretty much going to give some kind of a prompt information text. And this is kind of a, the, um, the basic information that will be shown for, to the user each time we have done the version update with this class, with this version manager. So it's gonna be, there's gonna be a header text that that's gonna come, hey, new JSON web token authentication was prepared for open older items, they might require further attention. So you need to put whatever is con like relevant to your update. So I'm gonna have relevant update uh, affecting JSON web token authentication. Then, of course, we're gonna feed some more detailed information. And this is gonna be the actual change that we have done. And how this is gonna work is actually that this intro info text it's they're gonna only be shown once and they're only gonna be shown after this version manager has 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 had to intervene and update migrate any of the objects so then we're gonna trigger this prompt so we don't need to um, kind of a save any permanent variable anywhere if this was shown that's one of the points for the version manager also <clears throat> okay then i'm just gonna copy paste couple of uh, uh helper tags tag just to uh being able to log this class once it while it's being driven used and my logging class pretty much all i do in here is kind of uh, ensure that I only log in debug and else I do not really log anything unless it is an error message. So I don't know if you want to use something like this or at least it is not uh, uh, wise to log everything in production. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. And then we are gonna write down our history so what I'm saying this is gonna be the history log that I can add what we did in here so we have a data item in version 1 and it had a authentication base URI which was which had a default value automatically derived from the data item space URL your URI so it wasn't anything that the user could have freely uh, uh, input by themselves so the application did it for themselves but right now in this future version 2 it, there has to be a dedicated authentication based URI which the user specifically has to input so if I don't now intervene and inject this default value once into this new parameter everything is, is gonna be cleared and any configuration that the user used to have working will stop working correctly and uh, I don't want to cause that 
to my user. So now we're gonna code the uh, version updater. So this is gonna be our function. Pretty much we're gonna need to have some parameters passed in here. Item is gonna be our data item. So <clears throat> this data item is my pretty complex data item. And uh, you're gonna need to have your, you have something else, maybe not as complex, but at some point something similar or even more complex. We're gonna need to pass in our database interface because we want we want this class being able to also save that new item back into the database and we will need view model because this is gonna be the triggering function also to show the prompt and of course this has to return that refreshed or the same service item data item back into the code whether it updated or it really didn't need to do anything so we're gonna say return if item dot version is not pretty much the current item version. Okay, our item doesn't yet have this version tracker in here, so we need to pass it all also. And we're gonna say one because this is gonna be the starting stage. So if you don't know, I mean, when you have default value in here, it acts like a, a constructor. And while you are while uh, serializing it, data it, data classes and feeding them into database, and then if you fetch them back and you're trying to serialize an item without a parameter into an item which should have a parameter in here, you should pretty much say JSON ignore properties and. Uh, it's just gonna use the uh, default constructor value coming from here without exception so it's kind of a getting the default values at the same time during serialization so they're gonna be like old version to begin with while i pull them from the database with this setup now we have to do our comparison if they need to be updated or not This is the part where we differentiate the current state of the versioning. So what should we do if we have item, items with version 1? So I'm just gonna take a logging function from here. I'm using my logger and I'm checking the ID and just for the log telling that, hey, I am updating this from version one. <clears throat> now we're gonna need to activate the view model prompt. So let's add some composable, uh, a mutable state variable into our view model. So let's open main view model. So this is the one that we're gonna show user prompt while and we're gonna say so new fair to rest is mutable state of 
fall so it's not gonna get shown until unless we have it we need to show it okay seems I have some errors in here all the mutable states can be eval variables not water okay so back to the version manager now we want to say view model dot view model scope dot launch always use view model scope to interact any any composables the uh, app may crash if it, it you use these from a complex setup such as threads coroutines that's kind of a the outcome view model hmm so new yes it's true okay our function is not yet done now we need to make our update function so and call that one update version one so here is the actual updater function and we want to pass in our data item and again our DP interface and now we can pretty much say update DP interface those we need to pass in okay here is the migration item we have uh, a data object another data object inside of our uh, service item which is out data and it it can store that that actual base uri and end uris which are in fact these are going to be the endpoints the domain base uri and the login endpoint for the json web token authentication that the user in future has to specifically input as a parameter so we want to ensure that the default uri value is preserved for the user and it used to come directly from this item space uri in here so but in the future user can define it and must define it by himself once that is done we can say item dot version plus plus we're gonna pump it up in into version 2 so this after that this function won't get called anymore because it is not version 1 anymore at that point so it's not gonna do it two times and we want to say dp interface insert format our item item like so and replace what this actually does we have a sql database and it's gonna be injected back into database and it's gonna replace any existing data so i don't know what database you're using but now it's secure back in the database and uh, next time we pull it it's gonna be up to date and of course we have to return this item back okay now our version one functionality is done so we don't yet have version two uh, uh, update requirements so we're just gonna end this saying else else i will log for the sakes of understanding what is happening log it and we return the item in here and of course we have 
the first check is that is this item up to date or not if it's smaller than our current version then we have to do something but else we really will not do anything except just return the same item so kind of a detours into this point and we want to log also in here for the sakes of understanding and now we have done some things and this function won't work so where did we mess up when else return return we don't return anything in here okay i think our version class should work now only thing we need to do is to um, actually call this in the correct places of the application and uh, build our composable uh, prompt info view to show these texts for the user okay let's do that okay now we have to use our version manager version updater function so in our main activity we only have one activity and a lot of uh, fragments in the on create immediately when the app launches in some phase before our composable set content we have view model scope thread running in here and in here we are fetching all of our uh, service item data classes from the database this is the correct place to run every single item through our version updater each time because it pretty much does the updating only once and then it's kind of a fast detour just to pass back the same item if it's already up to date so let's see uh, i will say and we need to initialize our version manager somewhere in somewhere in here let's say like so it doesn't need any specialties so we can initialize it directly and let's go back in in here and up version updater we pass in our item let's make it more clear at this point item we pass in our database interface and we pass in our view model now it can handle anything we need it to do and we say updated item <clears throat> so once we start the app all updates gets done once and now we do want to have the prompt so hmm what kind of a prompt will we code let me see i will just take a function from actual project and we will code it down <clears throat> down below in here it doesn't yet exist these are kind of a uh, a conditional composables which will pump up if we have the uh, view model request telling it to show up and then the user can, almost kind of a snack bar user can just close it and they get shown only once but now we want to code this composable okay let's go into our composable somewhere in here and all the way down here 
I'm just gonna say prompt for new features. Okay, let's make hmm. the composable function new features prompt like so and we need to pass in parameters pretty much only parameters we actually need to pass is view model that holds the conditional term that we just put in here so new features okay it's gonna be so that's the first composable we'll, we'll be using that one and I'm just gonna quickly copy paste composable in here we will have this animated visibility so this is purely standard composable uh, uh, object so you can access this by call animated visibility so it kind of a makes a smooth transition to show it show the content and we're just gonna play it with the show we will need our dark theme in here because we have white light and dark okay I take some of helper functions in here because you might have, have these so I also manage the text colors in here and we want to have cup three more so these ones I'm just gonna copy paste and tell you because these are standard you can get the configuration from local configuration current and I'm just checking requesting orientation of the screen and manipulating the width of this prompt so that it kind of nearly fills in portrait mode it nearly fills the screen width but in the uh, landscape we kind of uh, limit the width to not make it over wide and inside the content we will now code the prompt so there's gonna be a box we will need to have modifier and we say fill max with overlay with this is almost actually what we're doing we're coding our own snack bar uh, uh, prompt view and we're gonna say one dot dp with colors gonna be primary shape is gonna be rounded corner shape a dp so a little shape is welcome and next ones i'm just gonna copy paste <coughs> to make this a little faster like so so what we will have let me see what mistakes are we doing in here oops these do not belong into the box but inside a box hmm now I messed up messed up modifiers and everything okay the actual structure is that we have a card and everything that we pretty much coded right above belongs into a card and all we do in the box modifiers are these ones like so so box fill max size 
center this content into center of the screen and the car kind of gives the uh, elevated visualization and it's gonna be round rounded corner shape okay then we're gonna have a column because there's gonna be one two three four text items so this column stacks them nicely and is modifier fill max width again and we say padding 16.dp like so okay inside here is our content so now i'm just gonna copy paste because you must be familiar how to use text objects with composables so this is the header text so top text will be just saying hey we have new features and uh, it's a bold and size 16 kind of a popping up as a biggest item the next text is gonna be getting text values from our version uh, manager so this is gonna be the intro text that we wrote into our version manager so it says that hey new json web token other case was prepared for opened older items they might require further attention okay that's why we use it in here because next time logically when we pump up this version we also will update these texts and uh, they're not showing old text and then we will be showing that actual update info text as in here that's the detailed text okay and anymore what we need is a close button request so i'm just gonna copy paste this one too to make this a little faster so we have a close button inside a row it's a text button and all we do now we will close this by saying so new features is a false so this was the mutable state function that the version manager in here sets to true because we had to do update and the user closes it once he has read these texts naturally okay and we are calling this function in here it's gonna be laid right on top of everything so it is always visible hmm i believe we are nearly ready to use this we can start the a app in here like so let's see it building and it should pretty much immediately show us the prompt if it works and then it doesn't show that prompt anymore let's put our version manager in here and hope that this app runs without errors okay we have to totally clear this application now okay this was a surprising demo effect as it seems with my simulator there is no way for me to now kind of a have older items in the database because I, it, the app was clear but luckily i can also use this same version updater function to simulate the update functionality 
during while I open existing older configuration files, which in fact now do have unversioned or older version items stored in them. So in the third one, pretty much. We're gonna open configuration file, which has some unvalid data. And once we have unserialized it, we will drive it through our version updater and show that new item, which will also show the prompt. Okay, and we are now logging version manager. So let's see open config files we can now just bring up i don't one two three four maybe four in here and they are all old items select okay they they are popping up done and as you can see now here is the prompt which we are now seeing Hey, new features, new JSON web token authentication was prepared for open older items. They might require further attention. Okay, full login authentication URI must be defined. Server must respond for a one error during authentication error. Token is reused until server responses 101 for a one error. Default token format is bearer. You may define leading formatter value. And why this is important? Let me show you just to uh, demonstrate. Now, this will be custom, customizable parameter in this new version. And if I didn't kind of uh, migrate this from the old uh, data item, this field would be empty. And uh, now that the user gets the update, all of these, he's using this API testing application, all of these would be showing errors. Every single item he had, even his web sockets would be showing errors. But right now he is using them and doesn't even notice any difference and because we were able to inject the default values into those new customizable parameters. And now he's also informed that, hey, he can do extra stuff these days. We can still demonstrate that the prompt doesn't come anymore. Let's say if we just kill this application, which will force the onCreate function to take place, and uh, the prompt will not be shown anymore, like so. So pretty much we are just reusing refreshed items currently as in, as in here, even though the version up updater gets run, but it's gonna return that exact same item immediately. So it really doesn't affect the code any anyways, until we decide to pump up this version and again and in that point we will add version 2 function in here and here's a cool thing for you to figure out let me let me give you an example before we finish actually let's say we would have version 2 okay and we would say version 2 And we would say, do something, some update. And then return that item, like so. And of course, it will have its own update function. But now, how can we... How can we actually reach this now? That is interesting. You cannot reach it. This is never reachable. Hmm. We cannot just stop into this. Now we might need to make another check in here. Of course, we would need to pump this up into a three. But let's say 
this will work if this will work if it is uh, uh, one it's gonna get pump, pumped up into two but this function will never be recalled anymore until the app is restarted again this will of course get called if the version actually is two and then it gets pumped up into three in this phase but we can make this recursive and make a double check in here so I'm just speculating at this stage and can we make so that if we would actually call this version updater again else we would return that new item and in here we will again pass item is new item dp interface is dp interface and view model is cool okay this is recursive function it's gonna recall itself and reiterate instead of going into version 1 it's gonna go into version 2 and do exactly similar updates and then return that item so i just kind of uh, threw that out of my head in here it's not finished don't do it exactly like this but uh we can make a recursive function and make it recall itself and it's gonna iterate through all versions and then finish when it's really done cool okay that's all we'll be back